Here's my coffee, guys. Mm. Yum. Mm. Really, really good. And so, if you guys are interested in knowing what I put in my coffee, I am using oat milk and I use the silk brand of oat milk right now this is the vanilla but they also have an oatmeal cookie that's really really good and as you guys can see this oat milk really froths a lot and so if you're someone who's thinking about stepping away from dairy but you're a little apprehensive because you don't think you'll get that foam in your coffee or your lattes or your cappuccinos fear not this oat milk really froths up really nice and it gives you a really good tasting hot beverage in the morning not feeling my best today and um you know i'm just gonna go with the flow i'm just gonna go with the flow of it um yeah that's what I, that's all you can do guys everything is not always going to <clears throat> go as planned you know as far as just like life in general like when you think in terms of like for me, let's have a sit down real quick. So for me guys, I thought that, you know, I would become, I thought that I would grow up, become an adult, just kind of work, work in life and kind of just have just like a normal, normal life. Like, uh, like the things that you, that you used to see on TV back in the day. So as an example, you grow up, you get married, you focus on your family and you live your life and you have a happy life. There's nothing that really, you know, besides little family issues and such, you know, you just pretty much, you just live a cookie cutter lifestyle. That was always like the fairy tale when I was growing up. So even if you watched a sitcom, it was always the perfect American family, so on and so forth. Now, the narrative around my life is very much so not that. Um, both my parents were very, very young when they decided to become uh, parents. Uh, so my mom was 16 years old when she had me. And so it's not the, uh, the script was not perfect. It was not um, a perfect situation. And so I had my grandmother stepping in, my grandfather, uh, aunts, uncles, you name it, it was, uh, a true village type of situation as it related to me being raised so I, I just take my hats off to all people involved in helping me to be the woman that I am today um, it's amazing how everyone just kind of stepped in at different points and times in my life to help me and that's a wonderful thing and I don't think that I turned out half bad so can't complain about that uh, but now as an adult you know um, what I didn't realize is that, um, you know, the demands of life, and this may not have been the case, you know, way back when, like years upon years ago, when women stayed at home and they didn't go to work. But, uh, since I had become employed at the job that I cr I'm currently at now, I've worked, oops, so now I've worked at my employer now, it'll be... 22 years in a couple of weeks and since I got that job a lot of things in my life it seems that things have really fallen by the wayside so even my own parenting you know for this job it seems like everything has been affected and i don't know if it's just me kind of um deflecting it over there um i don't know i don't really know how to really put my finger on what i'm trying to say um but since i worked for this job in particular i noticed that um everything in my life has centered around this job and i don't know if it's because at the time, I when I started working at this job, I had a six-month-old son myself. I was 19 years old. Um, I had a six-month-old, and 
um, actually I may have been 20, but I had a six month old and I absolutely positively did not want to live a life on welfare. So when I got pregnant with my son and I decided that I didn't want to have an abortion or anything like that, the, the one thing that worried me was being a statistic and a statistic at that time was being a young mother not working and being on welfare and so when I got the opportunity to apply for this job mm -hmm. it was very important to me to get the job keep the job so that I can take care of my child because I did not want to be on welfare and so that had always been a thing for me and so I think that for so many years, just the fear, um, realizing that I had um, teamed up with someone who really was not going to be there. I, you know, I was in a relationship with a dude that was dealing with another woman, and I don't know if in the back of my mind I just knew that no matter how the story panned out, that he would not be in my life very long. And so that relationship lasted for. Uh, 13 years during that time I worked that job constant I'm still on the job but like I said a lot of things had to fall by the wayside so my relationships with my family um, not being able to see everyone as much because I did a lot of overtime and just a lot of things that I poured into that job uh, which is why I know now I, I thank God for my job every single day that job has allowed me to be able to feed my family to have health insurance for 20 something plus years um, it has allowed me to change my life drastically because I was able to get weight loss surgery a couple of times I was able to get um, surgeries performed uh, to be able to help me to lead a healthier lifestyle so I do really appreciate the job but because the job takes up so much time, and I'm not just talking about this job, I'm talking about jobs in general, just take up so much time in your life, that quality time that you can be spending with family. Um, and I'm not I'm not talking about, uh, well, it could be immediate family. So like my grandmother, my grandmother's raised me. I should see them a lot more often than I do, but I don't. And um, even my, my, my dad, like, my dad runs a business I don't get to see him that often and even sometimes I'm so tired at the end of a work day my brain is just tired and sometimes I don't even want to talk to anyone so my dad calls but I don't even want to talk um, it has just gotten to a point where I feel like the job rules my life and it's really taking it's really taking a toll and I don't know how to get a handle on that. You know, even being at the age that I am, I'm 41 years old and I don't know how to get a handle on it. So without being overly tired, just worn out, um, I would have to run myself completely ragged and not have any type of life outside of these things. And so like right now, my grandmother is I don't know I, she's showing signs you know I don't want to speak these things into existence but she appears to be showing signs of dementia and I don't want to say that word but I've been thinking it hi grandma hi. why is you down here like that huh why are you sitting down here like that yeah, why you got that over your head like that oh for so I won't get that stuff thrown on me. Um, you know, I don't want to say that word as it relates to her because it's just, I don't want to, I don't want to believe that that's what's happening to her, but it is. Something's happening. And I don't know if it's just that if it's if she's having hallucinations because she's not able to get adequate sleep at night or if it truly is a situation where it, it's turning into dementia she's you know I know like my grandmother has sacrificed so 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 much in her life like she is an, an individual that I like she's just completely amazing 
she she she's um an amazing individual like I, I don't know anyone more strong more spiritual and more diligent about taking care of her family so even if she couldn't take care of her family with money she's always praying she's always praying and i know that if she wasn't praying for me and i'll probably be dead her being in this way is really bothering me it's really bothering me because i don't know what to do and i don't know if it's too late I don't know what to do. And I feel hopeless. <laughs> I'm going to try to do everything in my power to just be there and to to be empathetic and understanding to her situation. But I don't want her to get locked in because once your mental capacity gets to a certain point she'll be gone forever and I had I've invested so much time into working and trying to build a life for myself and my family and you know I missed out on a lot of time with her I didn't get to spend a lot of time with her you know And now it just seems like it's imperative to do that. But once again, this job is in the way. And what I'm realizing is that people don't care. The higher up people go on the corporate ladder, they don't care about your situation. You, they don't care about the love that you have for your family. They don't care about that. At the end of the day, they still want their deadlines to be met. And they absolutely don't care. So if you are someone out there like me, who has God-given talents and you have the God-given right to be able to showcase those talents to the world, to be able to have an effect and impact on the world. The impact that I have in my day-to-day -day life, even at a nine to five job is simply amazing. But I'm limiting myself by being there. And this just good, everything that is happening in my life at this time, it just continues to further confirm that I need to leave that job.